Now, former CBS Evening News host Dan Rather really ought to know better than to push dubious political news angles for political gain. He lost his job doing that several years ago. Nevertheless, last Friday he went on another cable channel to compare the events of last fall's election to the war against Japan somehow. Watch. The Russians pulled off what I call a psychological Pearl Harbor, a surprise attack that was devastating to the confidence of, of the, our whole system of elections and therefore our whole system of government. It's one of the great psychological warfare victories. Well, Pearl Harbor, of course, got us into World War II. Is it time for World War III? Because remember, Russia hacked our democracy. Charles Krathammer is a writer and columnist and a keen observer of the insanity now unfolding. Charles, when you look at Russia hacking our democracy, does Pearl Harbor come to mind? I think that's a deranged analogy. <laughs> I mean, it's like saying this is the worst scandal since Teapot Dome. Watergate is insignificant compared to it. Look, so far, and Lordy, I am not a Trump apologist. So far, that's true. I can vouch for that. I love the word Lordy. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I do too. I'm going to adopt it for my own. I mean, so far, it starts with the charge the Russians have inter interfered in our election. In the Comey hearing, people got all incredibly sanctimonious about that. Comey said it's not a Republican issue, it's not a Democrat, it's an American issue, it's a threat to our democracy. Yes, they leaked some documents, we think the evidence is. Uh, the idea that they actually tampered with the system. The Russians have been doing this to just about every election and every country that we know. It's just a little more obvious this time. But imagine that this had happened in 2012. And it was Mitt Romney, the man who said Russia is our biggest enemy, was at the receiving end of Russian hacking and that the accusation was it re-elected Barack Obama. Do you think the Democrats on that committee would be in a high dudgeon over this attack on American democracy? This is the purest hypocrisy. But let's ignore that and say, okay, you want to investigate that. But that's not what the Democrats are interested in. It's the collusion argument. That's sort of the, the uh, sidebar to this, supposedly the sidebar. There's no evidence up until now, and they've been looking since July of, of uh, Trump collusion in this affair. So on the second count, there's no evidence of this. So now they're going after the post facto stuff, what Trump did afterwards. People know they're not going to get him on collusion, at least not on the evidence that we have. The head of the FBI tells him three times you aren't a target, meaning you're, in our eyes, innocent of this. So now it's going to be on obstruction where as a Professor Alan Dershowitz said, how can a president be obstructing justice, assuming on the Flynn case, when he has the constitutional authority to dismiss the case or to order its dismissal instantly? So if he's allowed, I say it's improper, he shouldn't have done it. But the idea that it's obstruction of justice when he has the authority to dismiss it completely is simply absurd. Well, it's insane. And I don't, here's the, the one thing from the Comey testimony that struck me was at the end, about Jeff Sessions, he said, you know, there are probably a lot of reasons he would have needed to recuse himself. I can't yeah. tell you what they are. That's innuendo. That's exactly It is the I lowest do. form of character assassination. Yeah. And then it turns out, according to the leaks in this meeting, he didn't have the goods. He had no idea. He may have met with them a third time at some undisclosed place, the Mayflower Hotel. I mean, it's, it was only designed to hurt Jeff Sessions. An FBI yeah. director should not act that way. Comey, I think Trump had a really bad day on the day of the Comey testimony. I think Comey had a really bad day as well. The idea that he was sort of sainted by the Democrats was sort of shocking and revolting. There's a guy who admitted to being cowardly in the face of instructions from Loretta Lynch, to being cowardly when supposedly he's being improperly influenced by the president, by not going to the authorities if he thought there was obstruction going on, instead putting it in a memo, sticking it in a box, and holding it as protection. These are not very honorable things to do. So no, I thought he came out diminished as well. But now, yeah. so that we are now on like the third branch of this attempt to bring down Trump. The collusion, which is not there. The obstruction, which is not there. So now they're going to go after Sessions on what? 
What's on, the charge? It's What's not. It's not even clear that he like r brushed shoulders with someone whose job it is to meet U.S. Senator. I mean, it's actually it's a witch hunt at this point, in my view. Charles, thanks for joining us. My pleasure.